Upon reaching pure black character tendency and killing a certain NPC, a mysterious woman will appear on the second floor of the Nexus. Her name is Mephistopheles, and she wants you to go on a murder spree on her behalf. Upon completing her hit list, she will reward you with several items, including a talisman of beasts and the foe ring. Getting her to spawn is the easy part, but murdering your friends in the Nexus? That's where the challenge lies. I'm Sweet Johnny Cage, and in this guide for Demon's Souls Remake, I will show you how to reach pure black character tendency, which NPC you need to kill, and strategies for all the targets on Mephistopheles' hit list. Character tendency is wholly separate from world tendency. They have no bearing on each other. What this means is that you can die as many times as you like in body form, push your world tendency towards pure black, and it will have zero effect on your own character tendency. Character tendency is affected by specific actions taken by the player across all levels of Demon's Souls, not just the ones where actions were taken. The scale of character tendency is similar to that of world tendency, and the icon has the same appearance once pure white or pure black are reached. It's an 11 point scale instead of world tendency's 8, ranging from negative 5 to plus 5, with 0 being neutral. The easiest way to tell being pure white or pure black in Demon's Souls Remake is either by the particle effects coming off the symbol, or whether or not the monumental gives you the friend ring of pure white, or if Mephistopheles appears a pure black. Reaching pure black character tendency is relatively easy and the changes happen in real time, meaning you don't need to warp using an archstone in order for the change in tendency to take effect. The quickest way to reach pure black character tendency is to kill several of the vendors you find in each of the game's levels, which have no impact on the story or world tendency. These vendors include the Filthy Man in Stonefang, the Once Royal Mistress in Latria, and Grave Robber Blige in Shrine of Storms, to name a few. Additionally, there are three NPCs, whom, if killed, will also shift the world tendency of their respective levels, as well as numerous NPCs in Black Phantoms whom, if killed, will have no effect on character tendency, but may have an effect on world tendency. Finally, an NPC must be killed using a weapon or direct spell in order for tendency to change. This means that death by Poison Cloud, Death Cloud, Soul Sucker, or an environmental death such as falling off a cliff will not result in any changed character tendency. You must deliver the killing blow yourself. Although you absolutely do not want to do this for the purpose of the Mephistopheles questline, I'll also list the ways to push your character tendency towards white, as pure white character tendency is required to get the friend ring from the monumental. If you have any questions about character tendency, please leave a comment or check out the wiki.art article, which I've linked in the video description. With that explanation out of the way, let's move on to the other requirement for Mephistopheles to appear in the Nexus. In addition to having pure black character tendency, you must also kill Yurt, the silent chief, who can first be found in Upper Latria level 3-2. Let him out of his cage and immediately kill him. Otherwise, he will return to the Nexus once you kill the next boss in Latria, where he will then go on a silent murder spree of his own. His targets are the same as Mephistopheles, so you want to make sure that you kill him immediately after letting him out of his cage. Otherwise, there is a chance that you may not be able to complete Mephistopheles' questline because a mark is already dead by Yurt's hands. Mephistopheles will not appear in the Nexus if Yurt is alive, so I can't stress enough that you need to do this as soon as possible. Yurt isn't that hard of an opponent to fight, and you can always kill him by pushing him off the platform. If he dies in this way, be sure to reload your game and loot the Gloom armor set from in front of his cage before warping back to the Nexus. Provided Yurt is dead, and you have pure black character tendency, Mephistopheles will appear on the second floor of the Nexus, on the left side of the memorial, or on the right side if you're in fractured mode. The questline can be completed in either mode, and you can shift between normal and fractured worlds at any time without affecting the status of the marks or the quest itself. One very important thing I need to mention before you begin this questline. If you are doing this quest for a specific reward, whether it's the Talisman of Beasts for killing Ostrava of Bulataria, or likely the Foe's Ring after you kill Yuria the Witch on behalf of Mephistopheles, Mephistopheles will not have you kill that person. Instead, she will skip that person on the list and go to the next mark. So, do not start this questline if you wanted the Foe's Ring, but Yuria the Witch is already dead in your playthrough you will have wasted your time. Instead, go to the next new game cycle and start the quest line there. Because again, Mephistopheles will skip that request and move on to the next. The order of assassination targets is as follows. First, it's Saint Urbane, worshiper of God and acolyte of God. After killing them, you get a stone of ephemeral eyes. Then it's Sage Frake and his apprentice. The reward for that is also a stone of ephemeral eyes. Then it's Patches the Hyena for a colorless demon soul, followed by Bjor of the Twin Fangs for another colorless demon soul, and then it's Ostrava of Volataria, 
Killing him rewards the Talisman of Beasts. And then finally, it's Yuria the Witch, which rewards the Foes Ring. After getting the Foes Ring, Mephistopheles will attack you, and then you can get her set, as well as the Epe Rapier and Ring of Accursed. So with all that out of the way, let's get started on the quest line. The first marks that Mephistopheles will want you to kill are Saint Urbane and his followers, which are the Worshipper of God and Acolyte of God. This isn't a really challenging fight, and if you have the Pyromancy Combustion, it's really, really easy. All you have to do is walk up to St. Urbane's back and just lay into him with Combustion. You can also do this with any weapon. His attacks are not that strong, but given that he is the strongest out of the three, I recommend going after him first. Once you aggro St. Urbane, the Worshipper of God will also start attacking you. She is very weak, at least when I was in New Game Plus, she was doing barely any damage, and I was using Sage Frake's armor set that doesn't have a high defense rating anyway. The Acolyte of God will not aggro provided you are far enough away from him when you aggro Urbane. You may want to equip the Thief's Ring, this way you are guaranteed to not aggro him. If the three of them do aggro, just try to get Urbane by himself, but he will run into a corner and attempt to heal. Do not let him do this, for obvious reasons. But when he's in a corner, he'll become a bit passive, and you can just keep laying into him with attacks, and he won't be able to respond. The Worshipper of God, on the other hand, is also not very powerful, like I said, but her pickaxe can interrupt you, so if you're able to pepper her with spells, that's great. Otherwise, just try to get in some quick attacks, and you can parry her pretty easily as well. She doesn't have a lot of health, so she'll drop pretty fast, and then provided you didn't walk too close to him, the Acolyte of God should be the last one that you want to take down. He just has a simple one-handed sword. It's sort of like a dirk. It's not going to do much damage, and he's pretty slow with it, which makes him pretty easy to parry himself. Obviously, I'm spamming Combustion because it's the most powerful spell in the game, or one of, if you can use it at close range. But if you don't have any spells to use, fear not. He can be interrupted really easy. I just have a Rapier, and that stuns him. Obviously, he can heal, as you see there. It's not good. You don't want him to do that too much. You want to interrupt it if you can. But just like Urbane and the Worshipper of God, the Acolyte will try to get into a corner, turn passive, and try to heal. If he does that, just follow him down and hunt him until he is dead. With Urbane and his followers slain, we return to Mephistopheles for a new mark. So, it is done. Here is your reward. Take it. Now for your next task. I want you to kill Sage Frake and his sniveling apprentice. Of course, I'll provide you with a fine reward. Excellent. I have high expectations. Frake and his apprentice are pretty easy marks. You want to go after the apprentice first, and if you're wearing the thief ring, then Frake should not aggro. He won't even notice that you've killed the apprentice even after he's dead, and you go to talk to him. You can still buy spells from him as long as you haven't aggroed him. So the apprentice has Soul Ray, which can be deadly. However, one thing that I like to mention is that when he is casting spells, there's a tiny bit of a delay between when he actually casts the spell and when it leaves his hand. So you don't want to roll right as he puts his hand up and once as it starts glowing. You want to roll right as the spell comes out, which is about a second later. So just watch out for that. Once the apprentice is dead and provided you have not aggroed Frake, make sure to pick up any remaining spells that you haven't bought on this playthrough. Once you're done shopping, go ahead and go nuts on him. Combustion works really well since he is just sort of stuck in a corner here, but he will roll to the left probably and then be able to sneak out if you're not quick. He casts the same spells as the Apprentice, so just watch out for them. Same rules apply, but if you can stick him in this corner, he goes down really, really quick. Once you kill Freak, make sure to loot his corpse for the Venerable Sage set, as well as the Ring of Magical Sharpness and Baby Nail. After that, head upstairs to Mephistopheles for your reward and our next mark. So, it is done. Here is your reward. Take it. Don't look at me with that ravenous countenance. There's more work to be done. I want you to kill Patches the Hyena. No reason for pause now, is there? 
Excellent. I have high expectations. Patches the Hyena is by far the hardest mark to take down. He is extremely deadly with his spear and adjudicator shield. The adjudicator shield has a slow but steady health recovery. So what I recommend doing is dropping right behind him, backstabbing to start off, and then peppering him with spells or a bow and arrow or crossbow from the second floor. Once you push him off, he will just slowly walk back to his perch as long as you have the thief ring equipped. And then you just want to keep repeating the process over and over. You can try fighting him head on, but his shield is so big and he's got a high stamina rating, so it's tough to stagger him. And he can just spear you to death, which doesn't necessarily ignore shields, but it certainly does a lot of damage through shields. Once he's dead, you want to loot his corpse for the thief ring and then head back upstairs to Mephistopheles for your reward and the next mark. So, it is done. Here is your reward. Take it. Don't look at me with that ravenous countenance. There's more work to be done. I want you to kill Bior. Bior of the Twin Fangs is an easy fight if you're good at parrying. He is very resistant to fire, which makes sense because he helps you kill the blue dragon in 1-4. And he's not necessarily susceptible to magic either, so you kind of have to fight him head on. What I recommend doing is getting a shield and a piercing weapon, or really any weapon you'd like to use, and just practicing parrying him. His sword is really slow to swing, but it is really large, somewhat larger than it looks. And I'm not saying that the hitbox is wrong, but it's just deceptively long, and it can hit you from pretty far away. Bior takes a while to aggro, as you can see. I've poked him 15 times and nothing's happened. I'm going to poke him a little bit more and still nothing's going to happen. But I will wind up dying to him, so the footage is going to cut and transition to a better attempt uh, here in a second. So just be ready for that. It's going to happen to you as well, probably. You want to be careful if Bior gets near any other NPCs. He has a habit of sort of walking into corners near... Maiden in Black if she's sitting there, and if you kind of kite him near the Crestfallen Warrior or any other NPC, your spells can wind up hitting them too. That's another reason I recommend taking him on just sort of melee face to face. His crossbow will come out if you're standing at a distance, but like I said, his sword is really slow to swing. So once you see his wrist coming towards you after the windup, that's when you want to parry. You're probably going to get it every time after you get it once, so just keep repeating that. It's nowhere near as hard as Satsuki's Black Phantom in 4-1. He's a pretty easy target to take down once you can parry him. And once his health is low enough, poke him a couple more times. And then loot his corpse for his armor set, which is the Brushwood set. It's pretty heavy, but you can also get the Ring of Great Strength from him. Once Bjor goes down and you loot his corpse, head back upstairs for your reward and next mark for Mephistopheles. It is done. Here is your reward. Take it. Don't look at me with that ravenous countenance. There's more work to be done. I want you to kill Prince Ariona, son of Alant. He goes by the pseudonym Ostrava. No reason for pause now, is there? Excellent. I have high expectations. One of the really interesting things about Ostrava of Volataria as a mark is that he is almost always in the world. And in level 1-4, if you walk past him when he is on the staircase and don't talk to him or interact with him, he will commit suicide. He just succumbs to his wounds and he's done. But... There was a rule in the original game, and I'm not 100% sure if this was even true, but this is what all the wikis say. The rule was that you needed to kill the NPC within the Nexus. So if the NPC was within the world, such as Ostrava here in 1-4, and he killed him here, it wouldn't count. But I can tell you, unequivocally, in the remake, this is not true. You can kill the NPC in the world. Ostrava is really the only one you're probably going to run into this with, because everybody else just sort of stays in the Nexus for a long time. I guess with the exception of Bjor of the Twin Fangs, he can also disappear after World 1-4, but 
probably not likely that you're going to run into that issue. Anyway, Ostrava in level 1-4 will die in one hit. He only has one HP, so the easiest way to kill him is to just walk up to him in 1-4 and stab him. If he does not appear in 1-4 and he is not in the Nexus, then unfortunately, you're going to have to do this on another playthrough because you either forgot to rescue him or he died before and he's just gone. It's sort of a sad state of affairs, but he is the NPC that people forget the most and it's really tricky to control him. So with Ostrava out of the way, we can return to Mephistopheles for our reward and the final mark. Well, well, very smooth work, almost merciless. Here is your reward. Be thankful for it. Normally, it would never find its way into your impure hands. Don't look at me with that ravenous countenance. There's more work to be done. I want you to kill that witch, Yuria. Of course, I'll provide you with a fine reward. Excellent. I have high expectations. Yuria being the final mark is kind of sad because you rescued her from a truly terrible fate in level 1-3 at the hand of the fat official. Luckily, she has very little health and probably won't even get a cast off if you can pin her in a corner with a heavy weapon or even a stabbing weapon or a spell. She drops the old ragged robes, the three-cornered hat, and the ring of magical nature. Once the final mark is down, you want to head back to Mephistopheles for your final reward and the true final mark. So, you're all done. You're what they might call a miracle worker. One final task, and the secret of souls shall die with you. Okay, so obviously Mephistopheles wasn't messing around. She meant to kill you the entire time. Luckily, she is somewhat easily parried, although her attacks are really fast and she has a piercing weapon, so they can be tough to deal with. The weapon is also on fire, and since you're a pure black character tendency, your health and soul form is quite low. She also possesses the spell Soul Sucker, and if you're close enough to her when she's casting that, you will die, and that sucks. So <laughs> you want to make sure that you do not get hit with that. It is one hit kill if it goes off and you're close enough. She can change weapons. She has a dagger that she can use in her left hand, and she's proficient with both weapons. Luckily, she doesn't heal, so you get plenty of time to sort of back off and heal yourself. If you use combustion, she can hit you immediately after it hits her, so it's not exactly a safe spell to spam. She is quicker than you are to recover from it, so you gotta be very, very careful. But you can sort of manipulate her AI into rolling at the same time as you, as long as you're rolling laterally, left or right, she will likely do the same thing. Once she goes down, you get the Ring of Accursed, Gold Mask, Epe Rapier, and the Parrying Dagger, and you will have gotten the Foes Ring automatically after you turned in Yuria's Mark, so you should also have that in your inventory. And that is the end of the Mephistopheles questline. I highly recommend you do this questline at the end of the game when you no longer need to change your magic, change your miracles, because those vendors will die in this questline, so just do it before you're ready to finish the game, but before you complete level 1-4 and before Ostrava succumbs to his wounds. I hope this guide has been helpful to you. It is a little bit confusing to control all these NPCs, where they are in the world, and making sure they don't die before you need to kill them yourself. It's challenging. you got to do a lot of pre-planning, but I hope this guide has helped. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Demon Souls Remake, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch, and as always, I'll speak Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.